This poem begins with the image of an orphaned child, a child who has lost his mother. And notice structurally we have stanzas of basically four lines, so quatrains, and that rhyming we have young and tongue, weep and sleep, so it's A-A-B-B. The structure of the poem is a fairly simple structure, and this is a structure that Blake employed over and over again. But the imagery that he starts off with of the orphaned child immediately sets this tone for the story. Chimney sweepers in his day and age had a very, very low job. It was, very, it was a job that was probably not very uh, one that anybody would want. Um, coal was a major burning product at the time, and the entirety of London was blackened by coal soot. Coal would come up out of the fires, burn in the, in the stoves and in the ovens and in the, the fireplaces of the city, and the coal would, would have these huge black clouds, make these huge black clouds over the city, and it would cake in the various chimneys, and so you had to have somebody go and clean out the chimneys. Most of the time, the men would be covered in soot, they'd be, they'd be filthy dirty, they'd be up on the roofs, which is very dangerous, um, they would oftentimes be carrying a lot of gear, and uh, sometimes they couldn't get to certain places in the chimneys, because the chimneys were very large, and tall, and so what they'd do is hire small boys. Uh, and sometimes small girls, but mostly small boys, and they would tie them up and lower them down into the blackness of the chimney where they would clean the chimney down, down below. And it was a very terrifying, very claustrophobic job, almost like being in a tomb. Not one to be uh, pursued by anybody that could s stay away from it. But this, in this story, the child speaker, the narrator, says that when he was young, his father sold him into being a chimney sweep because they had to have money. The child had to have some way to provide for himself, and so his father sold him before he could say weep, before he could even speak, before he could say weep, which notice here is sweep. Uh, th there's an apostrophe taking out the S, and so the child is saying, before I could even say the word sweep, my father sold me. But in the, in the irony of the poem, it's before he could even say weep before he could articulate the fact that he was miserable, that he was sorrowful. He was sold off into slavery. And so from early on he had this, this imprisonment in a world of slavery, of being enslaved to the job of chimney sweep. Then the second stanza transfers to another character, Tom D Dacre, who is sad because he's had his hair shaven off, as they would frequently do with the, the men and the young boys. They'd shave their heads so that they wouldn't get dirty, filthy, covered in lice, or stuck by their hair in the chimney, which would be horrible because he couldn't get out. Um, and the young boy is sad because they're shaving off his head, which is like lamb's wool. So notice the lambs from the, the, the piper and from the first uh, print, uh, the image of the lamb is again brought up in this young boy who's now having to have his head shaved in order to go into this horrendous job. But as we notice here too, then the narrator says to the boy, don't worry about it, it's all going to be okay. Uh, we're all going to do our jobs and all be fine. And he goes to sleep and he has a dream where the angel unlocks their tomb and sets them free. The sense that this life is a tomb. This life is like being in that chimney. And one day the angel will come and free us, unlock our tomb, set us free, and we'll all go dancing across the lawns. Uh, and at the very end of the poem he says, if we all just do our jobs, we'll be fine. There's a sense of the, of the conventional wisdom. Just keep doing your job. Just buckle down, uh, almost like um, uh, stay calm and, 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 and carry on, as the poster says. Uh, but in that conventional wisdom, there's a subtle critique as well, because as Blake kind of nudgingly suggests, it's not all okay. Innocence wants to say, do your job, carry on, it'll all be fine. And yet in the periphery, there's a sense for anybody that knows the difference that these young boys are condemned to a life of misery, a life of, of terror, a life of being imprisoned. They'll grow up to be chimney sweeps and be as filthy and as poor as they were when they were children. And most of these people uh, had very short lives. They died very young of either coal lung or of some kind of accident. That same kind of irony we see in the plate of the work behind us. The words fill up the plate. It's almost like the words dominate this plate. And at the very bottom, you see at the periphery, they have all these different images that are like trying to crowd in. But at the very periphery, at the bottom, you have the image of the angel unlocking all the children. They're going dancing. And even though they're going to be dancing across the green lawns, as it says in the poem, the colors suggest the opposite is true. It's actually going to, it's very dark. 
It's almost like they're being released from one tomb into another. And that seems to be the almost ironic cynicism of this poem of innocence. 